In the previous tutorial, we are looking at different objects that we could return using the query for object method of the JDBC template. So we were uh, trying to return a circle model object by running this query, which is a select star from circle, and we pass a particular ID. So we stopped at one particular point, which is in the query for object method. The first and second parameters happen to be the SQL query and the method place the placeholders in that query. The last argument is something called as a row mapper. So we need to implement a row mapper class that has a callback method that maps all these different uh, values in your result set to an object. So we'll implement that in this tutorial. So the class can be an inner class because I intend to use that mapping class only in my DAO method, which is fair enough because usually in your code, you would have DAO methods based on models. So if you have a circle model, you would have one particular DAO class, which has all the methods that operate on the circle model. So get circle, get circle for ID, get circle name for ID. So all the methods related to the circle would probably be inside one DAO class. So it would make sense to have an inner class for that DAO class. We'll look at some other approaches uh, later, but for now, I'll write a inner class. So I'll have a private. Again, since it's going to be used only here, I'll use a private. I'll make it a static, which is the best practice. I can make it a final as well, which is a best practice. I'll call the class as circle mapper. Now the circle mapper has to be a row mapper. So it implements a row mapper of circle. Now I'll have to import the row mapper from this one, our Spring Framework JDBC core. Okay, so inside this one, if I implement row mapper, I will have to implement one particular method, which is the callback method. So let me implement that. This is the one, it's a map row. Now the map row returns the type which I've defined for the row mapper, it's a circle. And now it takes in two arguments. The first argument is a result set. The second argument is an integer. Now what are these two arguments? The first argument result set is the result set that the JDBC template gets after querying, after running this particular query. Now, here's the thing, we are providing logic for mapping, right? So now the JDBC template runs the query that we pass, and now the JDBC template has a result set with it. If it were a simple data type, we see, we saw earlier, it knows what to do. If it's an integer, it knows what to do. If it's a string, it knows what to do. But now it's got a circle, it doesn't really know what to do. So we need to instruct the JDBC template about what needs to be done when a result set is acquired. So the first thing that we need to take is the result set. I'll call this result set. And then the second argument that it needs to take is the position in the result set. It is the row number in the result set. I'll call this row num. Now, what happens is, depending on the number of records that the result set has, this map row is called that many number of times. Now, a select star could return, depending on the number of records, it could return one record, it could return 10 records, you really do not know. So what we need to do is we, it, we need to pass the class that has a map row implementation and the JDBC template is gonna call this map row for every record that it finds in the result set. So it's gonna pass these two parameters, result set as well as the row number. So if there are 10, results in the result set, it's going to call this 10 times. The result set is going to be the same every time, but then the row number is going to change. It's going to go from 1 to 10. And what the JDBC template expects is, it expects us to take this result set and return an initialized circle object. So that's what we're going to do over here. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to create a new circle object. And 
and then I'm gonna initialize it. So I'll say circle dot set ID. The ID would be the result set dot get int and the column name is ID. Similarly, set name it would be a get string for the result set and I would pass the column name which is name and now I have a fully, fully initialized circle I will return the circle Okay, so I guess I do not have this constructor in the circle, so I'll just add that. Okay, now we are done. So now I have initialized a circle object with the values in the result set that I've got over here. Now notice that I'm not using the row num. You would use the row num if you'd want some different behavior depending on the actual row number, but in our case, I'm just creating a circle object for every row, so I don't really bother about the row num. So this is the method that's gonna get called for every record in the result set that the JDBC template gets when it executes the SQL query that we have passed over here. So now that I have the circle mapper, which is the row mapper, I can pass this circle mapper over here. So I will say new circle mapper. And now all that's left is the circle that it's getting has to be returned. So I'll just use return here. So it's going to return the instance of circle. Now I'll save this and let's try executing that. So I'll say DAO dot get circle for id pass the value of one dot get name so i'm printing out the name of the circle object that i'm getting over here so let's save and run this there you go the name is printed so again what's happening is i'm passing the logic for mapping a record of the result set to an object and returning the object. And this is the callback method of the class that I'm passing. Now, JDBC template does not really know how to map. So what it assumes is the third parameter that we are passing has to be a row mapper, of course. So what it assumes is the map row method of this third parameter will contain the mapping method. So all that the JDBC template does is it blindly calls the map row method of this third parameter every time it sees a result record in the result set. So it's going to call that method for every row in the result set. So this is how the custom mapping works. So we'll try out one more thing over here. We will try generating a list. So in the case of a list, what would happen is this method will get executed for every record in the result set. Now here we know it's going to get executed just once. So we are just returning the object itself. But in the case of a list, we need to call a different method over here, but it's going to be the same you know, the same concept. So let's try that out. I'll say public. I'll say list of circle. And get all circles. Okay, so it's going to return all the circles in the database. So the string SQL is going to be select start from circle. That's it. No ID where class. So what we need to use is the JDBC template dot I'll use query so there is just this query, which has the similar uh, functionality that we've seen. See, we have a string SQL object arguments 
and a row mapper. So this is what we're going to use. So we will pass the SQL as the first parameter. We do not have any arguments over here. It's just a select start from circle. If we had arguments, we would have to pass that. But in this case, we're going to skip it. And the second argument, the final argument will be the row mapper. We can use the same row mapper that we have used earlier. So it's going to be a new circle mapper. That's it. So now this is going to return me a list. So I will return the output of this query. And now this query method knows that this circle mapper actually it's a it's a list of circle because the result is the circle. So this is going to return a list of circle. So I will have to import list from java.util and this is it. So this is all it takes to run a query that returns a list. Now let's execute that and um, I will call this method get all circles. I'll just print out the count here so that I don't have to type in a loop. get all circles size just print out the size it should ideally return me a value one and it does i've got the value one i'm getting the list from this method so in this tutorial we've looked at a couple of ways in which we can use the jdbc template to return a custom object one is returning the object itself directly our own model object. The second thing is returning a list of our model objects. So both these are accomplished by creating our own implementation of the row mapper. So we've created a circle mapper, which is an inner class, which was our own implementation of the row mapper. All we had to do was implement a particular method called map row. And uh, we take in a result set. And for each record, we return the fully initialized model object. So we're doing it for just one record and we'll let the JDBC template call this method for as many number of records as required depending on the result of the query. So we don't have to worry about managing the list. We don't have to worry about all those other things. All we need to do is for one particular record in the result set, we need to create a model object. So this is all it takes. And then we pass this row mapper into each of our methods be it a query for object or be it just a generic query. And then, you know, the JDBC template is going to take care of everything else. We just return the output of the result of this method, and then we are done. So this completes some of the concepts that we need to understand to fetch data. So this is no longer required now. This huge method is no longer required. JDBC template is going to take care of all the intricacies and our DO methods become such short and simple lines of code.